In 1963, the Reverend Martin Luther King famously addressed the crowds from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. He spoke not only after centuries in which black Americans had been first slaves and then second-class citizens, but in an era when racist laws were still on the statute books in American states, including anti-miscegenation laws allowing courts to punish couples from different racial backgrounds who had fallen in love. Love. King spoke of his dream for a future where his children might one day live in a nation where they would be judged not by the colour of their skin, but by the content of their character. In doing so, he not only appealed to foundations of justice in the founding traditions and principles of America, but also made the single most eloquent defence anyone has ever made about the right way in which to treat other human beings. Fast forward less than 60 years, and as the British author Douglas Murray observes, we find ourselves in a time and space where an insidious current has developed that has chosen to reject Dr King's dream and instead insist that content of character is nothing when compared to the colour of someone's skin. Such a sentiment seemed to be echoed by many on social media during the debate that erupted after a white man disagreed with a woman of mixed heritage live on BBC One. A woman of mixed heritage who in turn found his perspective to be problematic on the basis that he was a white privileged male. Both subsequently experienced abuse on Twitter and the white man was even publicly denounced by someone acting on behalf of a trade union. And significantly both also received criticism for evoking the words and memory of Martin Luther King. At least one person pointed out the irony of the woman of mixed heritage having MLK as her banner image, while another even went as far as proposing that she had appropriated his spirits for hateful intent. But this was nothing compared to the scale of criticism and abuse the white man experienced after expressing solidarity with the Reverend King's perspective on character and skin, including from none less than Doctor Who herself, Jo Martin, who would be unveiled as the by then 56-year-old character the following week. Martin retweeted this tweet from Danny Lee Winter, the founder of the Act for Change projects the campaign for greater diversity in the live and recorded arts. And unless you want to entertain the retweets or not necessarily an endorsement game, then I think it's fair to say that Doctor Who thinks that Lawrence Fox is a stupid, arrogant, entitled cunt. Which obviously is fair enough as far as it's fair enough, because as the man from the trade union eventually conceded, everybody is still entitled to their opinion. However, especially in the context of MLK's words, in my humble subjective opinion, it's not necessarily the best example to be setting for young fans. Especially at a time when heated debates about identity politics have significantly infected the Doctor Who fanbase, to the extent that nerdy fanboys have been involving themselves in insidious hate campaigns directed at other members of their community, who they perceive to be unequivocally sexist, racist and transphobic, because they think that the Chibnall era is poorly written and distractingly PC. Oops. What's that look upon your face? No, this is not the good old days. What did we do to you to deserve this? Officially done by Doctor Who. <laughs> Alright. Rude. Can't you see it too? There's an elephant in the room. 